Hello, everybody. Good evening. I'm David, and this is my first live stream for Studio Nightcap. Um, I'm making a game called Crash Auto Drive, and uh, you know, I just figured, why not start live streaming some of this development, and we can chat and hang out. And maybe some people will come, maybe they won't. Um, but I've got some things that I can uh, I can do some stream tonight. So without further ado, let's get started. So I have my Trello board here with my backlog and my roadmap. My to do, which is sort of like this weird transition thing between roadmap and actually doing. It's kind of like here's what I want to do today or tomorrow. Uh, but today I've got some stuff here that would stream well because uh, it involves art. There's been a lot of dialogue writing lately. That doesn't stream very well, so I've been avoiding it. Let's see here, check my mic. Okay, mic levels are good. All right, let's start get started. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace uh, a USB key in chapter one of my game with some keys because I, ch I tried to, uh, decided to rewrite some plot points and the, the keys uh, to uh, uh, the victim's apartment would be a much cooler and more useful thing. So let's get started. Okay, let's see what we have here. It's been a while since I've looked at this scene, so uh, bear with me on that. Um, let's see here. All right. Hopefully the music, you can hear it, and hopefully it's not too crazy loud. Um, let's see here. Okay, so what we have here is we have the crash scene. And that is not the one I want. The sub scene. The one I want is sorry, the examined body scene. In there, we have a messenger bag, and inside the messenger bag uh, is stuff. So you can click here and see the stuff. Don't worry about all of this debug text. All these are debug tools that'll go away when the game runs. So let's see, bring up the messenger bag and we have USB keys. So this thing got hidden. You can see down here in the bottom right. Um, this used to be part of the, the narrative, but I decided I wanted to keep this. I wanted to, I wanted to give you a MacGuffin to find later in the game. Uh, so this has been replaced with some keys <clears throat> to the apartment. And I don't want to spoil any more. Uh, let's see. So I'm basically just going to start. I'm just going to use this one that already exists. Basically, I'm just going to rename it, change the art, import the art that I have from my artist, and just uh, hook it up that way. Uh, there's some dialogue I'll need to hook up as well. Let's call this, oops, apartment keys. Apartment keys large. So I don't think I don't think I imported the keys yet. Oh, yes I did. Awesome. So I don't even I don't even think I'm gonna need Photoshop over here. I might. I need to load this up and explore. I want to see how this how big this looks on screen uh, on a 1920 by 1080. Uh, resolution. Unity gets really weird with the resizing of these 2D assets. So, like this one's probably too big. It'll look pixelated and weird. So, I'll probably want to shrink it down. Oh, I'm gonna have to put some text on that too. That looks that would look cool to have some some text on there. That's probably about where I'd want it. So, I have this 10 uh, 1920 by 1080. Um, template that I use to sort of do a lot of stuff. One of the things I do with it is I use it to kind of idea, uh, have an understanding of how big something's going to look on screen. Because if I have it, I'm making the game for 1920 by 1080 or 16 by 9 resolution. Um, and if it looks good here with that size, then I don't need to rescale it in Unity. And if I really rescale it in Unity, it risks getting all pixelated and weird, like I mentioned. So. Um, so this looks pretty good. Size maybe a little bit bigger just in case because scaling it a little bit won't hurt. So I'll just create a new one there. 
and I'm going to export this at the new size and I'm just going to overwrite keys large uh oh right I'm using perforce so I need to check this out don't don't do this at home kids this is I could dig through perforce but I'm just not gonna I'm just gonna be lazy perforce can reconcile offline work later and find that problem that change um, all right so unity picked up the change and it imported it so let's change the sprite to keys large we can show that and it's super weird the scale is oh there we go the parent you got to be careful about that because the parent scale so if you look here like apartment keys large uh, is a prop that appears so basically like I have this whole system it's a it's a really complicated system where you basically click on things it's overly complicated really uh, um, you click on it and it would basically make this the stuff that you the child objects appear underneath it um, so let me see here do so yeah if you got you got to be careful because if the the parent objects scale is different for example it'll change the children as well so that's something I've got to watch out for sometimes in fact let's go up to chain yes yeah, the scale of that is so one thing you can do is come out bring it out there we go that's what I'm talking about Okay, there we go. So you bring it out from all of these other scaled things, and now I can put it back in a scale of one. Is this where I want it? So this game I'm hoping to also release on iPad at some point. So I come in here and I check. The iPad runs at a 4x3 resolution, so I'm, i got to come in here and check to make sure things are on the screen at the 4x3 resolution. Let's put that right there. Let's see. That seems pretty good. Now we gotta put this somewhere. So this I gotta change the art for this. Oh man. The scale got messed up again. Eh, whatever, I'll clean it up later. So we're gonna switch to key. Where'd that go? Keys small. Okay, we're gonna move keys large out of there because we're about to rotate this, and it would rotate keys large as well. Here, I'll show you. So if I rotate the child, we. So we don't want that. So we want to pull that out for now. Hide it. And now I'm gonna put it where I want it in this bag and scale it down. Hmm. Where do I want this thing? Ah. Uh, the pocket doesn't... It's too short. I may have to edit this. Yeah, I'm going to have to edit this. Art asset. I'm so sorry, Clayton, my artist. I could put it down here. That's not too bad, but it's it'd be cool to have something over here because this is just sort of this no man's land of nothing, and everything would be in this one pocket. That's kind of weird. All right, I want it. I want it there. I want to edit the art asset and make my artist cry. <laughs> Go back. Which one is this? Okay. Okay. 
<clears throat> basically, I'm just going to pop this thing into Photoshop. I'm going to take a screenshot of this. And this is my... I've been using Photoshop since the mid to late 90s, so I have a lot of ridiculous... I'm not an expert. I have a lot of ridiculously weird, probably, methods of doing things. Um, for example, I like to just increase the canvas size to have extra room to work with for stuff like this. And then I'll just shrink it back down. So let's see. I wanted it sort of like this. Is this about where it was? This makes all the artists really cry. The real artists cry. I'm not an artist. All right, let's... put this in a new file. Revert this. I have the actual source files somewhere else. So if I overwrite this and obliterate and cause a big mess, it doesn't really matter. Hey Ziggy, what's up? How are you doing? Thanks for tuning in. This may not work. <clears throat> Let's try it anyway. So I'm basically going to overwrite that same art asset. The key small O. Eh, whatever. <laughs> this project's a mess anyway. It's going to rotate. Weird. Yep. And I will rotate it the way I wanted it. How do you hide these audio gizmos? That was probably a huge mistake. Nope, that didn't work. Ugh. Yeah, whatever. I don't normally hide gizmos in Unity, so I'm a little little noob on that one. There we go. Hmm. There we go. That's a little better. Let's have it resting on the corner there. That's great. <clears throat> so, um, now I can put the keys large back in there. Click on that and make sure it looks good. It's not really where I wanted it. But let's put it there. Nice. I'll add the dialogue to that later. Or not dialogue, the uh, the text to that later. I'll probably put something like apartment number, um, whatever his apartment number is. <laughs> uh, just to have it on there, just kind of provide consistency. It's a really nice blank canvas that my artist provided me. so. Uh, that would be really nice to just kind of have some extra flair to it. Cool. Okay, so we've got the art assets in. Um, let's see what else is there here. Okay, so the what I have, this is all custom stuff that I have here um, for my interactive clue. And it all ties into the yarn spinner dialogue system, <clears throat> which is an open source dialogue system, which is pretty super, it's, it's a, I couldn't make this game without it. Um, it 90% of this game is yarn spinner stuff. So I've extended a lot of yarn spinner stuff and made a lot of custom stuff. Um, but to see the prop keys, so looks. Okay, so it looks like I've already created this file at some point. I was thinking ahead, I guess. You're gonna load? Oh. You know what, let's do it in the actual yarn editor and not 
So you can edit these yarn files. Yarn files are basically the dialogue files I have. And you can edit them either like this, uh, which are, is just like a, a yarn file format. And sometimes I do. I come in here and edit things a lot. It's a lot faster. Um, being a, a person who can code, uh, it's, it's, I'm very comfortable coming in here and editing things. But it's also really nice to use this yarn editor especially for branching dialogue because you can see where it's going. So let's see, scene, we're in the crash scene of chapter one, and this prop is the keys. So you can see it's got a little uh, node here. So I can bring this up, this is way too big. Yeah, you see this is all the old dialogue for the uh, for the old system. So um, I will get rid of this. Look at USB key. So I can get rid of all of this stuff. I don't remember what this is. Hold on a sec. Uh, it's been a while since I've looked at chapter one. I've been in chapter two for months. So I'm coming back to chapter one to do these keys because I thought it would be a cool thing to show. Uh, just hook it how to hook up a prop in my game. Oh, there we go. So I have this uh, design log that I keep. Uh, Daniel Cook is a fairly well-known game designer. He does this. He advocated for this thing called a design log, which is basically just this rolling document of design ideas, decisions um, for your game. And I find it really useful. I find it way more useful than a design doc, uh, even though it is kind of a design doc. But um, so for example, here I have this running section that I, it's, you know, it's dated 1116, but I've been, I mean, I was at updating this today, like I, I edit this. So what this does is um, I'm basically tracking the golden path uh, variables. These are global variables for um, the yarn spinner system. So I know like, you know, when, when something happens, like for example, if you have the keys, which is highlighted here, cause I haven't done it yet. Um, if you have the keys, uh, I know I can do things like, for example, here, if golden path GP has keys is false, then play this dialogue and then set golden path has keys to true. Um, I'm going to get rid of all of that old dialogue because it doesn't matter. I'm going to comment that one out because I might need a reminder that to do something there. So Emily is my main character and I'll just have her say something like uh, keys. I know it's original. Um, oh. Just a sec. Keys, 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 keys. I really need to get my perforce integration better. Okay, so there we go. So as you can see on the text version of this, it's basically the same content of that node, but this node has some extra information like the title, the tags, the color, position. That information is then pumped into this yarn editor. So if I move this over here and hit save, you'll see these numbers change. Okay, let's try that again. Save. There. So, yeah. But yeah. All right, so that's that's hooked up for now, nice and temporary. I'll come back and actually write this dialogue. Um, later because writing dialogue live is bleh. Nobody wants to watch that. Uh, I don't think they do anyway. Um, since I've hooked that up, I've now unhighlighted it. Um, let's see. All this stuff that got st struck, I've already done. So that's good. It's all dialogue writing. All right. So let's test this thing out. This might work. We'll find out. I suspect it's going to blow up. Do do. Come on, Unity. Wow, it's normally not this long for Unity to start. This is out of the ordinary.
Wow. Oh my gosh, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna have to make some modifications here. Okay, so I have this, um, let's go back to 16 by nine view. I, so when you load a scene like this uh, in my game, it will automatically start playing, usually it'll automatically start playing some dialogue. <coughs> Emily or somebody or some other character will start talking and um, you know, that's just to kind of introduce the scene. So let's disable that real quick so that it'll be faster to, to test out this new key. Um, so the crash scene, the car scene, nope, that's not the car scene. It is the crash scene. So this is, yeah, look at all this dialogue. It's crazy. Player choice and all kinds of stuff. Um, so let's set the crash scene intro to true because what that will do is it will let us skip. Actually, wait, no, this isn't. <laughs> no. Body scene. Ha ha. <laughs> Sorry, it's been a, it's been at least three or four months since I've opened up this level. So it's crazy how fast you forget um, stuff that you've been working on. I mean, I worked on the scene for like a year or, or, or so on this in my spare time. And uh, it's amazing how fast you forget it. So let's set uh, G Golden Path Examined Body Intro to true. So now when I load this scene, uh, and I'm gonna hit maximize on play because it looks better. So, um, it won't play, Emily won't be playing the dialogue. That she's like, oh no, a body. Yeah, so that 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 just won't play. I do this all the time. I disable um, stuff. It's really not, it's really useful to break out the dialogue into nodes and chunks because then that way you can kind of circumvent them uh, in pieces. Cool. So that's sh the keys are showing up, which is great. Um, hmm. Interesting can't highlight the keys so as you can see here I'll, here I'll show you what what happened what it should be happening is um, when you hover over them they should have a yellow box a glow around them an outline and when you click them it should pop up the large object and then there'll be some dialogue that's triggered which you saw me hook up so all this should work let's first let's debug this so first let's take a look at the collision box of the keys um, the collider here is actually huge so it's not that but while we're here let's fix it I like to give it a little extra room because eventually on touch screen um, if people's fingers are big and squanchy so uh, I like to have them actually be able to you know you could jam your finger <laughs> It's hard to hit like like hit little pixels with your finger. It's much easier if the thing is bigger. Um, the target window. It's a little more forgiving. Okay, so that's weird. Oh, clickable. Okay, there. So there you go. So determines if this object can be highlighted or click clicked. So this is my own thing. This is a this whole all of this is my stuff, my own custom stuff. Um, for whatever reason, that was a not not selected. So this should work. Now, we'll have to change the sound effect later because we don't want to have that. When you open it, it's going to play a sound and that's the cell phone pickup sound is not what we want. So we'll pick that up later. Um, my sound designer, I think, provided a, an, some key rattling sounds. So that'll be cool. All right, let's close the messenger bag because it, that way it'll be less buggy. Let's save the scene and hit play and try again. <laughs> Can you guys hear my sweet chill hop? I don't know about you guys, but chill hop has been my music for the year. Just 
needing some serious chill in 2020. It's great music to work to. I can't really code or write dialogue when there is where there are lyrics. I get distracted by the lyrics, even though I can never remember lyrics. Um, for some reason, I get distracted and can't pay attention to what because I'm writing words, either code or, or dialogue, and then I'm getting distracted by these other words that are coming into my ears. It's weird. So I listen to a lot of um, soundtracks and uh, chill hop. There's just no no words. All right, let's click on the bag. Hey, look, and as you can see, it's a little forgiving. So the collision uh, box, so if you look um, at the point of this, the tip of this point, the tip of the pointer, the top left corner, is actually the, the exact spot that is being used, not not the actual body of the pointer. It's just the tip of the, the top left tip. So you, you can see me come in this way, you can kind of kind of activate but if I come in this way, you'll notice it won't activate until the tip. Ah, there you go. It's in. It's in. That sounded really horrible. Um, <laughs> but anyway, but you can see this is a little more forgiving. And I'm going to have to make this collision box bigger. And same for this one. Uh, because on touch screen, they just don't really work very well. Uh, too, too tiny. So let's click on this and see what happens. Pop keys so you, as you can see it's playing the dialogue that we wrote keys and then if you look here it says set uh, GP has keys to true so when I right now it's paused right here uh, on this line yarn spinner uh, has processed this line and gave it to my game my game is now displaying it and it's awaiting for input and when I hit the button again it's gonna move on to the next line and you'll see that yarn variable get set up here Click GP has keys true. So I use these things. Uh, this is basically a, com a combination of um, a sort of built-in save game system and a global variable system. So I use that to know what the players clicked on, what they've, what decisions they've made, uh, how, where they are in the game. And when I save the game to to, to disk, those are the things that I'm saving to disk. Uh, <clears throat> so when I reload the game. All of that stuff, it sort of saves your game state. It knows, like, okay, you've, you've clicked on these keys before. So I don't have to have you come in and do that again. So as you see, when you click it this time, she doesn't say anything. That's because it's wrapped in this if statement. So typically what I'll do is I'll have um, an else statement just to have... Uh, wow, keys. So I'll have something like this that is a fallback so that there's not silence because silence is weird players don't under players may not understand that you've actually that they've clicked on when you click on something you expect um interaction you expect the game to respond and do something so if you just click it and nothing really happens it's weird so having emily say something like yep keys uh is fine so that's not going to live update but we have to run it again um, this particular prop, well, actually, let me finish this thought. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Hope you're enjoying my dulcet tones. Is that the right word? I don't know. All right. Um, let's click on this. The first time she'll say, wow, keys. You go back, you click it again. This time she'll say keys and it'll say that every time forever um, which is cool however there is a trick this game object uh, this wallet not wallet sorry it's looking at the wallet these keys are something that I want Emily to actually collect because I want her to take the keys and then we're gonna go to his apartment and kind of investigate from there in chapter 2 so I wonder So we won't even need this because it will be gone. And I do wonder, I haven't used this in forever, so we're going to we're going to do it live. We're going to see if, see what happens here. Inventory manager give item. I have no idea. I wrote this code like over a year ago. I have no idea what it's going to be. OK, so let's look at some boring code. Instant add item. 
Okay. Jump to that. Hide item. Item name. Okay. This is what I was hoping would happen. Because what I need to ha what I need to happen is I need to essentially when you click that thing, uh, I need it to go away because it needs to go in your pockets, uh, in your inventory. So you're collecting it, so it needs to disappear, so you can't click it again. And that's what that function will do. Let's see if just giving it the name will work. So this is give item inventory manager. Set, basically what this line is doing, uh, this is a function call. Uh, yarn, yarn spinner gives you the ability to have these custom yarn commands. And so this is a custom yarn command called give item. And I'm telling the inventory manager object in my game, hey, give item and then this item here, which is this game object. And the idea is that it'll do stuff on that game object. <laughs> Let's see what happens. But of course there's something useful. Wow, keys. All right, when I hit back, what happens? Okay, they're still there. Wait. Oh, there we go. Okay, so this yarn editor has this weird bug where if I hit Control S in this screen when I'm editing a node, it won't save. You have to come back and hit Control S to save. So it didn't actually save my changes. This is why games take forever. Got all my sick debugging stuff up. You can see my console with my error messages. I've got a console you can type. It's calling me a liar. That's weird. Oh, I haven't added it to chapter one. Ha! Huh. Okay, well, that's add that to the. Let me do that before I forget. That's a, a tech task that I'm doing. I'll save that, and I will throw that on my backlog for future me to deal with. I personally find it really useful, um, just as a workflow thing. I find it really useful like when I have a task like that to just go ahead and um, write it down and then throw it in Trello so that I don't forget about it and also I don't have to think about it and can continue focusing on what I'm working on right now like I could go down the rabbit hole of going and doing that right now um, but it's not really necessary but basically what I'm talking about is I, I have a, uh, a console that pops up like a half-life or something where you can actually type commands and do stuff um, but it's not hooked up in chapter one because when I added it to the game I was in editing chapter two so I need to make that a global thing that's across the whole game. Wow, keys. Hmm. Well, there was... Well, that's a thing I'll have to fix. <laughs> or maybe I could fix it now. What is going on here? Why does that not hide the object? This inventory stuff is gross. It was written back when I was actually going to have an inventory, and it's really just hacked to be using. Um, yeah, see there, look at that. That's that's the problem right there. The item name is... Yeah, look, all of this is... <laughs> To do, build a proper inventory system. For this game, there are so few items. Eh, this is fine. And it's it bit me, so of course it did. Um, so let's change. Well, we're going to have a USB key later, so leave that.
I'm not going to make change. I'm not going to fix this for this game because there's literally only like three things you pick up in the whole game that you carry around with you. So it's, I don't think it's worth uh, writing a whole uh, an inventory system right now. Um, I just need to focus on getting the game done. For next game though, I'm definitely rewriting this. If if I use this system. Uh, I'm definitely rewriting this. Let's So this is some hard coded hard coded terribleness. Don't don't ever do this. <laughs> But you'd be surprised how much of this stuff is in real games. Uh, I've worked on AAA games in the past, and there's stuff like this in, in AAA games. So This is just my little indie game, so I don't really care. Um, apartment keys. All right, so now what I need to do Need to fix that. Hold up. Yeah. Am I not spelling it right? Apartment keys. Spelling is uh, not my forte. There we go. All right, so I need to go back and change the dialogue, the yarn command, to, to use that. Okay, so now what happens is inventory manager is going to get the give item message. And that's going to come to my inventory callbacks right here. So this is a yarn command. It's going to say give item apartment keys. And then inventory manager is going to say add that item. So we jump over to inventory manager and it's going to add item right here. It's going to add it to the items list uh, of items. They're just a list of items that are being tracked. And then it's going to hide that item in the game. Uh, just, you know, I'm not actually putting it in. I'm not actually giving it to, to Emily. I'm not attaching it to her, her game object to carry around or anything like that. It's literally just hiding it in the scene. But I know that she has it because it's in this items list. So, uh, whoops. All right, that should work. I should hide that item. But there's one extra step we got to do, which is what we got to hook up that script to the game object. If you haven't already wishlisted the game, you should check it out. I have the link at the bottom of my stream. Tell your friends. <laughs> do, do, do. One more step and this task will be done. Okay. <clears throat> Ignoring all that. So in the, is it the inventory? Yeah, I believe it's inventory manager. So in the global thing there's a inventory manager calling me a liar I thought there was whoops that's not what we want uh inventory manager yeah where is that okay it's in my global thing across multiple levels okay so you'll notice apartment keys is not set so that's these two hard-coded game objects. There are definitely better ways to do this, and you should definitely not do this. Uh, um, but for the sake of this really small game, I think it's fine, uh, especially because I, you know, it's just me. If there was other people working on this game, I would say take the time to actually write a proper inventory system. Uh, but for this, for me, just for me, I know how this is working. It's it's fine for me to just ship the game. Uh, so, 
let us get rid hide that and there apartment key small what okay well let's just set that to none so the USB key which is not in the scene will just be none which is fine And let's try again. Hmm. Hide, Emily, hide. Okay. Your totes is stuff useful. There we go. And it's gone. Hooray. Oh, there's a warning, though. Let's see what that is. Okay, that's a recurring warning. That's not related to this at all. So there you go. It's gone. It's now in the inventory. We now have golden path has keys equals true. Um, it is in the inventory system uh, as a separate thing. Honestly, you could just track it with this. You don't really need to have the separate list in the inventory manager. I could just use this and probably will just use this. Um, but yeah, there we go. I've just finished hooking up the keys uh, in the scene. I'll come back and write the dialogue for it later. In fact, I will make this a thing to come back and do later. So this is a content task. Um, I've got like this little legend over here that I really like. It took me a while to come up with this system, but I like it. But basically, I just have, you know, what these colors mean things. I wish I could have more colors in Trello. Um, it'd be nice. But there it is. So we'll write. We'll come back and write that later. Um, wow, we've been live for 44 minutes. Um, that's incredible. Time flies. But I would say this is done, so let's move it to done. Let's see, what else? Make a construction invoice and hook it up in game. Let's start that task. I could make this another stream, but whatever. Let's just do it. Um, so I'm going to close out this because it's got another weird bug where if you open up another one, you won't be able to edit things if you open up like another once you've opened one and you pop in here whoa you can see the dialogue it's way more complicated uh this one's a lot different but you'll see i won't be able to make changes on to this uh, so you have to basically close it and open it every time but hey it's open source made by volunteers who are busting their butts uh doing it i'm super appreciative of you guys that worked on it so thank you it makes my life a lot easier uh, and if this game ever makes some money i'm going to definitely donate to the yarn spinner uh development fund i mean i already pay covered on patreon or pay for it on patreon but i mean like an actual better contribution because this game wouldn't be possible without it <coughs> um all right so before we move on because this is all in chapter one i'd like to submit this stuff to source control and if you don't use source control you really really should uh, because you will get burned so the first thing we do is come in here and I know it's only, I know it's in this folder and I will have perforce look for all of the changes that have been made I used to use a version um, but then my web host got shut down. They got bought by GoDaddy and then uh, they were shutting down. So I moved to a different web host um, and my web, my, you know, they don't have subversion. It's a pretty old technology. Um, it's still great, uh, but it's been eclipsed by a lot of fancy things like Git, a lot of shiny stuff like Git. Um, I don't really know Git. Uh, I needed to, an emergency jettison of, uh, my my source control from subversion to something i know perforce really well so i basically set up a perforce server on a home computer and that's what i've got going and i've got that being backed up to a cloud storage um just in case the house burns down or whatever 
but um, yeah, so I'm using Perforce for now. I don't know if I'll keep using it or not. I might move to Git after this project, but um, you know, you don't want to switch things up too much when you're trying to ship a game, uh, especially this game's in the in the sort of twilight months of the game. Like I should really only have a couple of months left, uh, ideally, to work on it. So like, I don't want to be changing up. I don't want to be learning Git at the very end because uh, that would just be just too much extra work. Um, so Perforce it is for now. Let's before we check in, it's always good practice to do a diff of what your what your changes are, especially if you're working with a team. So let me just look and see what the changes are. Just a quick code review. Okay, that looks good. That looks good. Body scene. See, I would I would have just checked this in, and I don't I don't want to check this in. Um, I don't want to check this one in because it's skipping that intro. That's something that'll bite me later because, like I said, I haven't looked at it in months. I'll come back and be like, why isn't the intro playing? It'll be because I checked this in because I didn't do a code review. So I'm going to revert that one back to the way it was. And I'll check the rest in. I like to write really descriptive change lists because these things are really good for a log. You understand, you have an idea of what really went into it so you can actually go back and if, if something bad happens you can kind of look through and be like oh that's where this started happening or this was you know something like that so you know uh, you have a good idea of you know what went into it excuse me uh, whoops chapter one apartment keys so that's basically it there we go um, so I can close that out of I can close this as well in Photoshop don't need those keys okay so let's move on to our next task and that's happening in chapter 2 <clears throat> Excuse me. So let me return all of this the way it came. We came. Chapter one's all nice and wrapped up here. I like to do this because it just is prettier. And now we will load the apartment scene, which is where the invoice needs to be. I realized there's a puzzle. Uh, as, as I was wrapping up the dialogue for chapter two, I, I was like, man, how do, how's a player, there's no clue for this, for a player to solve this puzzle. And I realized that I didn't have a, uh, I realized I didn't have a clue. Ha, I don't have a clue. Um, but I do, I did have a clue. I did have, I looked at my asset list that I sent to my artist and there, right there it was, it was like invoice. And I'm like, well, he didn't give me that. And I looked at the assets that he gave me and I was like, no, it was there. I just didn't, uh, I just didn't make an asset for the game. I didn't put it in the game. So that's what we're gonna do now. Let's see, so this takes place in the living room. So we'll load up the living room sub scene and this one might be tricky let's see okay um let's load up let's load up something oops wrong one brain fart sorry Let's load up the apartment scene because I want to circumvent. There's a bunch of dialogue that happens right when you op walk into the um, living room, and <clears throat> just like that car scene, and we don't we don't want to have that happen. So let's load up the living room script, which is the same here, and I'm just gonna comment this line out, the living room intro, so it won't play. Let's load this up. I'm honestly debating about putting this prop somewhere else. 
in the in the in the in here. Um, maybe not the living room. There's a lot of things to click in the living room. So I was originally going to put it here on the stack of papers, and it would pop up, and then it would be like two stacks of papers. There'd be like the Bridge City Beer Club, and then this invoice for this construction work that happens that is a clue to a puzzle. Um, I'm just clicking through this stuff. But um, I need to move this up and shrink it a bit. But I, or do I? I do not. Um, but there's a lot of stuff in this room already to click. I mean, look at this. There's like that, there's this, there's this, there's Kyle, there's, he's a character. Uh, he, there's the surfboard, the TV, the console, the game stack. There's a lot of clicking and a lot of stuff to examine in here. So it might not be a bad idea to just move it somewhere else. Also, to do this and then have them side by side is a lot more complicated um, and a lot more bug prone. You'll look here at this game stack, it's, and it's set up that way where there's three things. Um, let's. I'm going to turn on super fast talking. Okay, never mind. I didn't need to. So I've got these debug tools that let me basically sp speed through dialogue, like click, 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 and then auto talk. So you just, I'm not even touching anything. It's just going. Woo! Um, very useful for getting through the game uh, to debug things. So this is what I was originally planning on doing um, was two invoices side by side like this. But honestly, the text is kind of hard to read already at this size. And it's like taking up the whole screen. Yeah, I'm going to move this stack somewhere else. So I'm going to reuse this prop, this prop actually, the little one. I'm just going to copy paste this but this bad boy and put it somewhere else the real question is where does it go um do we want it in the bathroom is there a place in the bathroom like near the toilet <laughs> he's sitting there reading his invoice garbage can wait is there even a toilet in here Oh yeah, there it is. I don't know about you guys, but I wish I had this bathroom. As is classic all games, the characters chill out off, off screen like a theater production or something. Hidden until they're needed. Uh, garbage can. Could put it in the garbage can. That, not, that may not be a bad idea. That could lead to some fun jokes, right? Like, ew, this isn't a garbage can. And he was probably just touching this while he was taking a dump. And that's, I need to wash my hands. Like, there could be some fun jokes with the dialogue, putting it there. That's my number one contender right now. Also, the bathroom is really light on things to click. There's basically this duck and this medicine cabinet and the stuff in the medicine cabinet. And that's it. So there's not a lot in here. So that's a prime candidate to put stuff. Uh, we have our kitchen scene. Let me make this bigger for you guys. I just realized I was not using up my real estate here. That'll show better. Mm. So you have the espresso machine, the blender, the fridge. You can see the things that can be clicked on by the green box around them because that's the collision box. So there's three things there you can click on. That's decent because there's a lot of things to click on in the fridge. You know what? Let's just do the bathroom. The bathroom's the best place to for it. I want to make that joke too about the papers being dirty. So first thing we got to do is go to the living room and just duplicate Control D that object and bring it into the bathroom. And we're done. Million dollars. Kidding, not really. <laughs> I wish. Um, so we have this beer club invoice. Let's rename it to construction invoice. I'm a big fan of copy pasting things and just modifying. Um, I, you know, working in AAA, um, 
a vast majority of the work I did was copy paste modify in order to get stuff done on time. Um, I mean, there's a lot of original writing of writing stuff, obviously new ideas and writing uh, um, original stuff. But you know, when you're getting down and dirty, you're like, okay, I need to make this level. I need to make the scene. I need 20 trees. You know, you're not going to make 20 individual trees or, or you're going to make modify, take one of them and scale and rotate it and plop it and scale and copy, scale, rotate, plop, scale, rotate, plop. You're not going to create each one from scratch. It's just much faster to copy, paste, modify. Um, and one of the big benefits, too, is, you know, this works, right? Like if I were to create a new. So this is a prefab in Unity. So I was if I were to add a new one. And then if all these, all these, well, you can't see what I'm pointing at. Um, all of these things here would be blank and, or not blank, but they would be default and they, they'd be set for weird stuff. Um, but, um, you know, the thing is like, I know this works. There's a certain combination of things for each prop type that works really well for different scenarios. So it's better to just copy paste it and then move on versus starting over uh, because it, it makes it more error prone. There's there's chances that, you know, a setting like a checkbox like you saw may have seen earlier. There was like a checkbox that wasn't clicked um, and that could just lead me down a rabbit hole and waste time. So copy paste modify is a good thing. <clears throat> So construction invoice SAML small. Did it have two L's? Yes. Construction invoice large. I like to just put them in this thing. I know you don't really have to, but I put them in here. These containers. Okay, so. This invoice is going to have to change. The art asset will have to change because I'm going to have to, like I did with the keys earlier, I'm going to want to like rotate these things and chop them so that they're kind of like chilling, just kind of popping out a little bit. And they're not like sitting there. I mean, I could just have them sitting here, but that's not, that's not as interesting. There's no depth. It doesn't imply depth uh, uh, like the garbage can does. The garbage can will be better. I mean, I could put them on the toilet. That makes sense too. But I have a sneaky suspicion that in four by three, that's going to get cut off. Yeah, that is like way too minuscule. Um, you had them like kind of rotate like that, maybe. But that's like players tend to look at the center of the screen and the edges, the peripheral edges. Studies have shown that players don't really don't really focus on those too much. So having it down there would be kind of a jerk move, especially for a, a hint for a puzzle. Like I want people to find this so that they get a hint for the puzzle. Um, Cause honestly, <clears throat> this is the hint that the puzzle even exists. Uh, so I want, I definitely want to make sure people find this. So I'm going to put it more center screen. I'm going to put it in the garbage can. Like I initially said, Hopefully talking through the process of this stuff is helpful for you guys. I don't know. Some people find it useful. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna have to make a duplicate of this art asset. Where's that sprite? Let's load it up in Explorer. Invoice small. Let's duplicate you. Wait, where'd it go? There it is. Invoice in trash, small. Let's call it that. So, 
Um, let's go to that game object for the invoice. Invoice in trash small. So there we go. Now we need to go into Photoshop and edit that sucker. I should have kept Is this yeah. Whoa. No, Photoshop no. Do not want. Let's rotate this. <laughs> That's cool, Ziggy. What kind of game are you making? Have you taken a break in a while? Has it been a while since you've uh, worked on it? Does that look, would that look good? That'll look fine. I really miss, someday, my next project I really hope will be a 3D project because I really miss building levels. Um, this one is 2D. I wanted to start small because I wanted to build up a lot of, um, I wanted to build up a lot of um, tools, like all those debugging tools you see on the screen, and I wanted to get all that sort of ground layer built. Um, This might. There we go. Plop and Unity automatically picks up the changes. That doesn't really look very good, does it? Maybe. Oh no, let's look and see. That's not too bad. I don't want to get it any smaller. Yeah, that's going to have to be in the middle. Ooh, thanks GL Tovar for the follow. Oh, a 3D survival horror game. That sounds cool. <laughs> Are you working solo on that, Ziggy? Is it... Uh, solo is hard. I've been working solo on this game for a while. Uh, it takes way more effort than I thought. Um, but yeah, keep... I mean, if you enjoy doing it, I say keep going, you know? Uh, you look at people like... Um, Oh, I can't remember his name. Concerned Ape. He worked for six years on Stardew Valley. Um, you know, other people worked. Um, Thomas Happ worked for many years on Axiom Verge uh, solo, both solo devs. Um, solo is hard, but and it takes a lot longer than I think it does. Um, but yeah, <laughs> if you enjoy it, though, keep going. Let's make this a little bigger. Oops. Oh, nice. That's awesome. So it's already on Steam. You can uh, check it out. Like, feel free to drop a link in the chat if you want. I don't mind. It'd be cool to see it. Um. Let's see what. Oh yeah, the, the collision box. That's what I was editing. There we go. Make it generous for those big old chonky fingers like mine. For touch screens. 
All right. So the next step here is again. Um, ooh, thanks for the follow, Teb Queen. How are you doing? So this is the beer invoice, which we don't want. <clears throat> Oh no, I've revealed all. No, uh, what, what do we want here? There's a, so my artist who made these art assets because I cannot art, um, he made a Photoshop template for me. So that's in my asset source folder for this invoice. I don't know if I should. I know some of these people. They're friends of mine that follow, that joined, and I don't know if they want me to say their real names. So I, I use their usernames. So hello, thanks for showing up. <laughs> this is the first stream ever. Studio Nightcap, I'm trying to finish this game. First, I gotta finish this asset. Where? I don't know which. I need to. I need to organize this folder. I don't know where it is. Nope. Spoilers for the whole game. Invoices. There we go. Keep layers, and then it's going to complain about fonts that I don't have. Um, sure, why not? So then we have a construction invoice. Um, I'm not going to edit this information now because it takes it takes research time. Because what I do for the if if you look at the um, if you look at the beer club invoice, it actually has like legit adds address uh sort of it has you know like actual invoice date that matches with the actual dates in the game uh in the in the time period and sort of like the, the real um period in the lore of the game so this construction would need to happen like months ago in the game um the game takes place in august 2027 so i need to like kind of do that and then i also look up addresses in the city of pittsburgh here and I actually look up, I don't use real addresses, but I use sort of like where I want the building to be uh, in the city to make it very much more grounded and realistic. Um, like, you know, hey, this, you know, if, if, for example, like where the accident happens and where Vanguard Labs is, which is the corporation uh, that makes the auto cab that hits somebody, hits the victim, um, and where Thomas, the victim, live, uh, you know, and where the accident happens, like all of that has to be within walking distance. So all of the addresses that I use are in the sort of same walking distance sort of neighborhood. And I want to make sure the time matches. So it's like, oh, you know, it's been two hours. Uh, so, you know, it couldn't have been on the other side of the city because they couldn't have walked it. And no one's really ever going to check it. But if somebody did, it'd be cool for it to line up, you know. So anyway, all I'm saying is I'm not going to fill in all of these details yet. Uh, I'm going to basically leave them blank. Fill them in later. Uh, but for right now, I'll just export this as like this. Hold up. Why is there? Oh. That's why there's two sheets. Herp. I like the look of two sheets, though. Awesome. Thanks for sharing, Ziggy. I will check that out in a bit. What? Let's see. Good luck on it, for sure. I found that um, motivation... I've been making games for 14 years. It's almost... Almost... No. 
13 and a half, 14, something like that. And the one thing I've found for sure is that motivation is way too fleeting. Uh, I found that um, discipline and having a schedule is more important than actual motivation because motivation comes and goes. But if you stick to your schedule of like, I'm going to work on my game an hour a day, uh, you'll look back a year later and be like, holy crap, I did all that. And uh, whereas motivation, you know, it'll be there for a couple weeks, a couple days, a couple weeks, it'll be gone. Um, it sucks. I, I, I still fall into the motivation trap and I'm not, I sometimes still don't listen to the advice I just gave, but, uh, but yeah, it is, uh, I, motivation, it's a fickle mistress, mistress, what is that, <laughs> GL Tovar with the octopus, that is super cool, alright, let's export this construction invoice, and you know what? Let's uh, while we're at it, let's open up the other one I made. Invoice large, so I can get around the same size in the game. Oh, a friend of mine just texted me and let me know that I'm in emote only mode. What does that mean? This room is. You can find your currently. That would explain why there's so many emotes coming in. Ha! <laughs> I'm free! Uh, <laughs> Tovar says. Um... So if you if you don't know, like I know that uh, Ziggy, you're on you're on YouTube. I'm actually live streaming on multiple platforms at once: Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook, all at once. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, pretty risky click. Uh, no, pretty pretty risky bold move, Cotton. We'll see if it pans out. Uh, I just butchered that quote. No, not using Restream. I'm actually using Streamlabs built in uh, because they built into uh, the the. Streamlabs OBS Prime. Uh, so I basically started paying for Streamlabs to get the multi-streaming. Because uh, it worked out, it was like, you know, it was about the same as paying for Restream.io, but you get all the benefits, other benefits as well. So I figured I'll give it a shot. If it doesn't work out very well, I can check out Restream. I do like how it combines all of the stream chats at once. Uh, into one thing. I can't respond to the st to the uh, YouTube or Facebook chats um, by typing. I can respond to typing and chat uh, for Twitch, but I can at least see everybody's chats and I can interact with everybody. It's pretty neat. Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Uh, no, I'm old. Um. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool, uh, Ziggy. That is not what I'm looking for. Um, <laughs> the, uh, what the hell is this a asset? Beer Club Invoice Large. Got it. I need to rename some of these. Um, that sounds pretty cool, uh, Ziggy. Yeah, like, that's a achievement in, a, in and of itself. Just putting something on Steam is, uh, that's a pain. That's a, that's a lot of good work that you did there. It took me a while to get my demo up on Steam. What? There we go. All right. For this, what I want to do is I'm looking at the image size that I used, which is huge, apparently. I may need to come back and resize these. No. So this one worked out pretty well. Thirty, nineteen, thirty. 
do do do. Constrain proportions. Uh, sure, I'll fix that later when I do the text. Hmm. I could make this pixel perfect, but it doesn't really matter. Being sloppy tonight. So we're going to put this in chapter two. It's going to be the... Get out of the way. Construction invoice large. Unity just imported that. Imported that. I could probably make this small. Whatever. Um, let's just change that to this. I don't want to change the scale because that's way too tiny. Nobody can read that. There we go. We're going to move this to the side a little bit so that Emily Emily is going to be positioned around here to talk about it. So I don't really want she'll she'll she stands here so I don't really want her kind of encroached. That might be a little large actually. Hmm. Let's switch to 4x3 to make sure the composition looks decent. Um, I don't want it on top of but anywhere near buttons. Yeah, I see it's like cut off at the bottom. That might be okay. Oh, it's like that here too. Eh. Could rotate it a little bit so it's not doing that. I like rotating it though because it gives it a kind of a more organic feel like you're picking up a piece of paper. If it's all like grid, it just doesn't feel. Uh, if it's all like ortho. What's the. Eh, whatever. On the grid, it feels very. Um, meh. What's this here? So, let's see, Tovar says, you click the visibility toggle for the FPS window to hide it in the editor, but it's still compile in the game when you build it. Do you mean all of this debugging stuff that I have here? Because that is not the built-in Unity stuff. Or is there something else? Hmm. Left side of the hierarchy window, he says. Do, do, do. Let's take a look. I am curious. Those are pluses. Huh. Thanks, Robert, for following. Why did it show the zombie? It should have been the cat thing. That's weird.
Thanks for the like. I wonder if that's not Twitch. Hmm, I'll have to look into that. This is the first stream for anybody tuning in, so I'm still getting the hang of... I'm get, still getting the setup for all my overlay stuff. Oh, right. So, like this. Yeah. I often do this. Well, I don't know if this is what you're talking about, um, Tovar, but uh, I often do this. Yeah. I'll hide, like, all of my debug stuff. I have it all in this sort of debug object so that I can work without it in there to see what it looks like. Um, that's actually a good idea. We don't need any of that stuff today. And it'll stream a lot better. This is looking pretty decent. I dig it. That's room for Emily. Okay, let's move on and continue getting this work. Um, all right. Do, do. Okay, the next step for hooking this bad boy up is uh, we need to write some, not write some dialogue, but we need to actually create a dialogue object because uh, right now we, we have this beer club invoice um, and we don't actually have a uh, script for this. So I'm going to duplicate this. I, when I when I was in college and I was at a programming job on the side, I had this um, I had this uh, AOL. This is gonna date me. I had this AOL uh, instant messenger username called Sir Copy Paste a lot, and uh, I lived up to it because I was doing a lot of copy pasting scripts and just modifying them back in the day. Construction invoice. Man, my old programmer Bones hates these long names. We used to have like eight characters plus a three character extension. And now we're just like YOLO and just have these huge words, file names. Let's open that up and change the title of this. Let's open this up in the visual editor because it looks nicer for you guys. Let me move Unity over here. If you're wondering why the screen is so uh, weird and I have this black or blank space at the bottom of my stream, it's because this is an ultra wide monitor. Um, I don't know how I feel about it. I've had it for a couple years now and it's cool, um, but I kind of miss having two monitors. I miss docking things on like a separate monitor. Like I have my laptop monitor, which is what I'm looking at when I go over here to see what you guys are saying. Um, but I kind of miss having two monitors. I don't know. But then again, I'm sure as soon as I got a switched back to two monitors, I'd be super annoyed by the big black bar between the two, uh, the two monitors. So can't win. VR, I guess. VR, VR is the future, right? AR? Um, all right, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to show this visually. Um, let's see here. Once we wrap this up, I think I'm going to wrap up the stream. I've been going for about an hour and a half, which is pretty decent. Uh, I think I'm going to have to call it quits here soon, though, um, once I finish up this prop. I appreciate everyone tuning in. Let's go to, let's see, what did this thing, what was this thing called? Oh, it's not even chapter. Chapter four. Living room. Oh, crap. It's in the living room currently, but I'll move it. Construction invoice. All right. One of the ways I like to work with this is I like to have Unity up. This is where the ultra wide is nice. I can have my dialogue over here and Unity over here. If construction invoice chat is false, change that. Let's put that gross joke in there. Let's 
So this works. Um, I don't know if this is what I'll actually say, but this is what I'll put in for now. Ooh, he was probably touching this while he pooped. Um, and then, you know, obviously I'm going to have a whole bunch of extra dialogue to go here. So we'll come back over here. I'm going to close that because I'm going to move that file in Unity because it makes it a lot easier. So I'm going to move that from the living room to the bathroom. It doesn't matter where it is. And Unity, Unity doesn't care. It's like a honey badger. Um, but I like to keep things organized. It makes it easier for me. So where do we do this? All right. So we load up the construction invoice file, and then. Construction invoice start, which I think is what we called it. Yep, okay. Construction invoice start. Construction invoice start. So, the um, next time when I load this up, when I click on this, it should make the big one appear, and then she should comment on it. But first, I need to disable the bathroom intro scene. If you've stuck with me this long, you know that every scene has an intro. I'm going to disable it so I don't have to click through it. It makes debugging what I'm actually working on a lot faster. <laughs> Alright, we've got the prop. It highlights when you hover over it. You click it and up pops the prop, the large prop. One of these days I'm going to figure out how to get Unity to not make slightly tilted things blurry, uh, text blurry, but that's a problem for the future. As you can see, she says this. We go back, you click it again, and then she says the other thing. You gross. Yeah, this is nice. This is good. I dig it. <clears throat> I'm really happy that this happy accident happened um, because I felt like the bathroom didn't have a lot going on. It felt kind of like a wasted room. There wasn't really much to click on in here. There's stuff in the medicine cabinet, but it's not super critical. Um, there's the cute LA duck. That's something. Um, but now I feel like this room has more purpose. Um, and that, that's some interesting too. I think this is a really good example of collaborative game making. Um, you know, when I came into this, I was going to put this in the living room uh, with the beer stack. That was my full intent But when I started to stream. But then when I got in here and started thinking about it, you know, I was like, well, actually, where would be a good place to put this? And then, you know, looking around, you come into the bathroom, you see that my artist had made a garbage can. And that sparks inspiration. Um, and that's where I miss the collaborative aspect of working on uh, games, because this is a solo thing. Uh, it would be cool to have other people working uh, on a regular basis like that, because you get those synergistic ideas like that all the time when you're working on, on a, t a small team. So anyway, great. Wow, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to call that task done. I think I'm going to wrap it up here soon, everybody. Um, I think that's the last good thing I have to show for tonight. So let me move that over on my Trello board. Um, if you're not using Trello or some sort of task tracking thing, highly encourage it. It's pretty cool. Keeps me on track. Um, this stream, uh, which just, you know, follow me on Twitter or whatever uh, is, would be the best way to know when I go live. Um, or follow me on Twitch or Facebook or YouTube because uh, it'll no and, you know, have the notification alert to know when I go live. Um, but this one should be an interesting one. I might do this in a, not this week, but maybe in a week or two. 
um, streaming the emotions and movement pass. And basically what that is, is um, once, once I write the dialogue for a chapter in this game, I will then um, basically run through it a bunch and get it the way I like it. Maybe play test it with some other people, ideally play test it with other people, but pandemic. Uh, and then, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, come back to it and then add all of the emotions. So, uh, and by that I mean like the facial expressions, the body poses, you know, doing things like, you know, the Phoenix Wright style sort of like movement, uh, like sliding characters across the screen, flipping characters if they're talking to somebody to the left or right of them, all of that sort of stuff to bring the scene to life. Uh, I save that to the end because if I do it all up front and then I change the dialogue, I just wasted a whole bunch of time. So basically get it, get the dialogue the way I want it for the most part, then come back and do a, a, an emotion and uh, movement scripting pass and that's what that is and that'll be more interesting because you'll get to see uh, all the different weird facial expressions that the characters make um, and that kind of stepping through that I don't know it might 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 look cool I don't know um, all right let's reconcile this and wrap up because I know there's some stuff we don't want to submit like this intro actually is that the only change okay we'll just revert this whole file those are new That's living room I think I'm just skipping the intro again yep let's just revert that Adding, so yeah, basically adding the new art assets. Um, changing the scene, stuff in the scene, Unity scenes. And then adding the new dialogue. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Let's see here. Adding construction invoice props. Placeholder prop because I'm going to go back and make it better later, probably tomorrow, and actually write the dialogue for this because nobody wants to see somebody sit and write dialogue, I don't think. All right, well, I think that's about it for tonight. I super appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, thanks for all the likes and follows. Um, it really means a lot. And uh, I'll catch you guys later. All right. Have a good night or morning, wherever you are. All right. Later.